Okay, welcome back. So in this particular discussion and the lesson, we're going to be now demonstrating a horizontal, okay, vertical, and then I'll draw diagonals later, diagonal alignment with respect to drawing the human figure, but really for anything you want to draw accurately from observation, especially from observation. This, this technique really doesn't necessarily apply if you're drawing from imagination, but it also can if you're drawing from a photograph or photo reference. So this works well for observational drawing primarily and also from images that you're drawing from. Now, what I have in front of me here is a grid made up of vertical lines, right? and also horizontal lines, okay? So what does that mean? What's the big deal with this? Well, if you already draw pretty well from observation or images, you're doing some of this already, okay? So what we have here is a pretty, a pretty standard system of grids, okay? We understand that. But this is also a mental projection. And this is what today's um, longer video lesson is about is understanding and cultivating, okay? Cultivating this mindset within your mind so that you can begin to relate spatial distances when drawing a figure both vertically and horizontally and also later on diagonally, I'll put lines on here later, in order to better judge scale proportion, negative space, in the overall alignment or misalignment of, and that's also a good thing, of the figure, okay, aspects of the figure uh, in your drawing. So today's lesson is horizontal, H, vertical, right, and diagonal, okay, horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment. So this system here, and you don't have to draw it, I'm just showing you this, is, is you want to start to develop these mental acuities, is what artists do, really good artists, artists that draw really well, paint well, observationally especially, they project in their mind. And that's the, the attitude I wanted to start to get across to you today, is that these are mental projections that artists use, they flash them, and then they take them away. Now, it might not look like a grid. It may just be one line. But I wanted to put multiple lines to show you how that system works, okay? And then we'll do some demos here in a moment and to, to make it hopefully a lot more relevant. Now, this is not a grid system when or where you've seen, let's say, Michelangelo, where he's taken a, a drawing and then he's uh, gridded it out so that he can blow it up to mural size. That That's called... Uh, uh, resizing, uh, ratio resizing for a larger size. That's not what we're talking about here. These are mental projections to help with alignment or misalignment to see where things are not quite aligned but almost and you project these horizontal and vertical and now also diagonal lines across a drawing and they can come from anywhere. That's why I'm not going to draw them perfectly within, well y'all might the first ones within this, within this grid. So now we have a diagonal line. So sometimes you might just use a lot of diagonals. You might just use a diagonal only. Other times you might just use a horizontal. You don't use necessarily, um, from my experience, every one at the same time. What you do is you use one or two uh, at a time to help you line up. Now, you've seen artists, you know, where they've got their thumb out or their pencil out. This corresponds to that. Now, I've got a video on that made by one of our former instructors, Taylor Woolwine, who likes uh, to do that, and I, I had him demonstrate it because I don't really use that system. Um, uh, the thumb, etc., I think it's a little too clunky and it slows you down. Rather, I use horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment, and that's what this is about today. How to align up uh, a drawing and, and find where it misaligns in a good way. What do I mean by that? Well, that um, a head doesn't always line up to a certain kneecap all the time. It doesn't have to. We're just finding where they fall. And the real purpose of all this is, again, to be more accurate in your analysis 
of observational and perceptual drawing from the figure especially. Okay, so that's what these projections are for and you'll use these all over your drawing and then during artistic training we like to have our students actually sketch out these lines at times. So I'm going to do some uh, with three different poses today where uh, we demonstrate that and show you what's going on and the lines have a way of disappearing as you finish your drawing or you just don't show the lines and you use them as you draw. But to draw better and to draw more accurately and well, you're going to be needing to use horizontal, right, vertical, and diagonal alignment. Okay, let's go on now to our first set of poses. We'll do three poses and let's get, let's get this into practice. Let's draw along and let's see how this works. Let's go on to that now. All right, so we're going to pop up our next our image to draw from our figure here, Michelangelo, uh, uh, Sistine Chapel, uh, painting here, McNudie figure, nude, Ignudi, and we'll start out with our techniques. We won't use the volumetric figure. We'll do some, some um, kind of uh, finished sort of contour lining, sketching approach, and then we'll, we'll talk about horizontal uh, in vertical and diagonal alignment uh, especially. So uh, we're going to compose here. We'll, get, we'll kind of begin to sort things out. And even in gesture, this starts to really, you know, come forward in terms of its usage. So we'll start with now the uh, bringing out the head a little bit here, leaning it back a little bit, bringing out that head, coming through, okay. Getting that classic kind of oval. Neck will be this way, center line here, eye line. So I like to spend a little bit more time on the head, kind of the first in the first part. All right, so we have the head necking through here, and then we're going to start gesturing real nice curvature of that rib cage area really coming through. And our first line, as I notice, a vertical line, is that you notice that from the chin downward. You see that the lower abdomen kind of aligns up with his chin. So I'm going to put, I've already analyzed that, but I'm going to put a little line here um, across there. Maybe I should use black for that so we really see, see, uh, see the abdomen. Excuse my color changes here for a moment. So that's our first alignment line. Okay, so this is going to be a heavily kind of diagram drawing, which is what we want. So that's our first uh, vertical line there coming through and you notice that again that chin lines up uh, there and as we cut we keep drawing that down um, it, it almost kind of lines up with the back of the of the that right leg knee too as well so we've got this shoulder here now our gesture is he's coming through really arching arching over really nice curve curving through here, body cube through here. So we know that that abdomen is here across with that belly that starts to break over and come through a little bit. Okay, we have that coming through over the belly area and through, okay. Uh, then we'll start to throw the gesture out, coming through and over. So we're using kind of a diagonal thrust with that leg out and through here, right? So we have that coming through. Knee about right in through here. Now, this end of the knee coming out through here, if we use the diagonal, now if we use a little siding here with our drawing, we can figure out a little bit how far that needs to come out. So if you project in your mind, so I'm making manifest, this is important, I'm making it known on the paper what I'm doing in my mind. I wouldn't normally obviously do this, but we wanted to show you this. So the space between where the knee, the end of the knee is, calculating, just visually referencing that distance, distance feels pretty good right into here where it's not too wide, it's not too narrow, and I could always change it later on. So that's kind of where the end of that knee is, right in through there, and we can bring that back over. Of course, we see that pillow that he's on, that he's using a little bit, kind of right in through uh, here as well. 
So we'll continue on with our gesture. Now we have a diagonal alignment line that we can use, okay? So we know that this knee here, coming down in our gesture, right, right in through here, is further out than our side line that we put on his chin, just up by a little bit, right in through here. And we also have this diagonal in through, so it kind of makes a triangle. So we can roughly say by another vertical that this feels really good where this knee ends, ends about right in through there. So we can pull that up and I'll project it longer, okay, coming up and see how far out that knee really uh, is, the end of that knee, that right knee, from where his head and his chin will be, since we can start to get even more accurate with that as we come through and work our drawing, okay? So now we have the knee here, and we can start to feel that gesture. See also this diagonal movement? See how it also pulls the flow of the leg back and it keeps going even though this angle curves and see it goes up a little bit further in. Now, how far back our next move is the foot, the total foot, it goes past the buttock, right, which is sitting probably, and I say probably, because we can change that about right in through here with our gesture. So we want that alignment, we could say, okay, that's the back of the butt in through here, and it aligns with the back, roughly the end of the, just about the end of the head, maybe a little bit further. And so there we are. Oop, we've got a fly in here. Get out of here, fly. And we've got to go a little bit further with our butt, right in through there. And then we can bring this all the way down in our mind, or now on our paper, right? And there we go. And we can see that that the end of the buttock aligns pretty much with the back of the ear, just a little bit further, maybe the start of the hair, not quite the end of the head, just a little bit further, right? Right in through there. But it also, the back of the buttock here, aligns with about the uh, inner ankle, that higher malleoli of the inner ankle, about right in through there, so we can and of course, this happens really fast. I'm slowing this down so you understand the technique of when you're drawing. You use this, you don't really think about it. And so there's the angle of the ankle right in through there, okay? And then we can keep on coming out with the gesture of the foot and the big toe roughly right in through there with the foot and the toes coming through there. So you start, see how we start to get a nice kind of configuration with those alignment lines. All right, so now a couple things to think about as we come down with the shoulder, shoulder a little bit lower in our gesture, right, right in through here so we get that flow. Then we let's feel where the, uh, the elbow is in our relationship. See how the elbow almost really aligns with the lower knee, isn't that nice? Pretty close, so there's the elbow joint about right there, maybe just, yeah, about that, about that size right there, because the thigh is going to be a little bit larger. We have to be careful of that. So we have that elbow joint here, right? And then we can move and bring this out, this gesture, and that's going to come right and rest on top of the knee later on and actually go a little bit further out. So there's our hand right in through there as we lay out our nice flowy armature, correct? Okay? And so now we see the other arm, we feel it's almost off the, the image here, but it's a little bit lower. Look at the diagonal that's made from shoulder to shoulder. And so you can use bony landmarks to help you with horizontal, diagonal, and vertical alignment. So a bony landmark from shoulder roughly to shoulder, which is inside and about right there, okay? Right in through here, uh, hidden by the back will get you here. And then we have the elbow roughly about right in through here, emerging, and then coming on down to rest a little off on, uh, on that pillow. And we see that it rests underneath the buttock, right? Which is again right, uh, right about uh, in through here. So the end of that arm is right in through there. And of course that's underneath just slightly that knee over in through here. They could actually go maybe a little bit lower where that buttock sits right in through there to, to, to make that work 
forest. And so we've got a pretty good placement now of some of the attributes that we want to locate now or utilize uh, now in our drawing. We can go a little bit faster. We'll put this little um, apparatus that he is sitting on here in our composition as well. And we notice that's right next to the knee. We see that right past the foot, which is pretty, relatively pretty easy to do a little bit. So let's go now a little bit further uh, with our drawing. We won't go into a great amount of detail, but we'll just craft a little bit of a sketch in through here. And we'll start to tighten this a little, little bit, uh, a little bit up, we'll go a little bit further right through there. Chin, you can do cheekbone to cheekbone. There's a diagonal line right in through there, across underneath the nose. The cheeks, the arches are right, generally right underneath that nose area, right in through here. <clears throat> we can come through now and come over to underneath and over. And we can start just to put on a little bit of symbols for the hair, a little bit, wrapping in through there. <clears throat> Neck coming down, side plane of the head, I'll just use symbols for the eyes for now. In through here, down turn of the mouth, through there. I'm not going to get into too much detail here and through here. <clears throat> Neck over, now we can start to look at the shoulders coming in through a little bit further now. And so we have a nice place we can start to get congruent. Now we'll take, you don't really see the spine really curves over a little bit. We'll come over and through here <clears throat> and around. So you can see how gesture in horizontal and vertical alignment really work nicely together. I'll come across the figure a little bit and through here. And you can see this is on a slight diagonal. We can, we can judge that. We can come over a little bit now to the abdomen part, right where the lines, okay, right in through here and up and over. <clears throat> Not getting too much into detail to the lower back where it really, really starts to, Michelangelo really gave him a nice, strong arch and through there, bulge this, come back over, and then we get a little split of the back, right into here where the scapula would be. Right into here, we get that bulge, just right into there, and up and over. Okay, right on in. <clears throat> and so now we'll come down a little bit further. Come on down to this oblique. In through here, that's really in tension and bulking out. Okay, right in through here. Now what I do is I see another diagonal we can use. So this diagonal, I'll show you what I'm looking at as I align here, here, over to the other side, right in through here. Okay, do you see that? Right in through there, right in through there. To get me from this kind of egg, see this egg form oblique? right in through here and over as I'll just start to shape that see that coming through we see that over okay but its other side of the belly is right in through here and see how it goes past the head somewhat so that's that is the quintessential key to horizontal vertical and diagonal alignment. Huge, huge key there. I just broke my pencil, so I'll just switch over now to a slightly different color here, right in through there. So now we get that uh, change in the distance, right in through here. Notice the difference. See how that is pushed a little bit further out, and we got that. We got what we wanted uh, from that. <clears throat> I'll just put an eye divot in through there so you can see this. So we got that change that we wanted, and that's good horizontal and vertical diagonal alignment. Then we'll come down, and we start to see that the center of the abdomen starts to emerge about right here, because we see the belly button about right 
in here. And notice how that's on an angle. It's about the same angle as this, as this line in through there. So we've got that pooched belly button that's being squeezed a little bit. Curvature here, and then we have the lower part uh, of the belly, and then we start the pubic region. We'll just leave the, the genitals just out for now, because we don't need to deal with that. And they're slightly on an angle, right? We see that here, right? So there's another angle, same as this, pretty much this diagonal. So everything's on a diagonal. Now we can find, and I'll come back and I'll find the buttock over here, okay? Right in through here and on over. So notice that we're still, look at this curve, right? That's happening with that figure. So you notice the curve coming down. It's coming down here, the buttock. And we can simplify the, basically that buttock, that glute, that right glute is in quite a flex. So it's got some extra curves. Well, we could get to those later. We want to sit it down on that pillow. So this spatial distance is important as we weigh that. Now I could do that, I just looked at that vertically. So in my mind, what I did was I just weighed the spatial um, measuring space. Okay, I didn't use my thumb and my pencil. I just visually weighed it about that distance. Right? And so that opens that up. Then we can get to this leg. Okay, we see that leg, genitals here. Underneath that, so we've got now the start of what we can do with the thickness of this leg. And it really starts, you can see, about where the end of the belly is. And, of course, it, it, it comes out now. So we can see this spatial distance here. We can rel relate our thickness over. Okay. And there's another technique that I have uh, on the drawing database. It's axis and width. And that will help you with the spatial thicknesses. And I go into that in greater detail. That's another lecture for another time. And I can start to get this gluteal curve here. And then another slight curve as it sits down on that little platform. Comes in a little bit, bites that tightly. And then we start the outer part of the leg, which is the biceps femoris there. Uh, in the back there, and then we can start to come down. So all this, remember the gesture flowed right underneath there. So we had that flow uh, in, the, in the gesture, right in through there. We came over, we'll catch that knee in through here. That knee brings that diagonal right across here. See this angle? So we analyze that diagonal through there, a little bit different diagonal, okay? We have that come over. <clears throat> I'll just put that a little, little tone for now. So we have that. So we're coming down to this uh, area of the knee here where we get to the joint and condyles of the tibia, fibia, and the femur. Okay, coming through and over. So we see this. This will help too. You can get some of these smaller little angles. See how I can use those angles? And then we can soften it up later. We'll come across the form. Well, we'll find that joint where the soleus and the gastrocnemius come underneath that. Then we can start. Now we've got our gesture and we know, see how we know where we're going to, which is really particularly, I think, obviously important. And through there, we'll tighten this up a little bit. And through here, and over around, through there and through, get those bulg bulging muscles that we that we want with their drawing here. And then we can start to come over and say, okay, let's finish out this leg a little bit, keeping on that angle, looking at this angle, coming down this way. So that calf moves in, a little bit more of a diagonal alignment here, and then moves back over. So we can see that, and of course we see our bulging calf. And through here, we see that egg form right. Okay, so we have that. Okay, coming on down. <clears throat> and over and through. And down around. And let's see, let's take a look at that uh, ankle again to that buttock line. 
and let's take a look. The, it's the more of the inner buttock line, not the outer buttock line that's going to that's going to align. So now I can change that. So now I took and I I uh, reevaluated, and it's the inner buttock, not the outer buttock. So the inner buttock line right into there. So see how we can continue to evaluate what we're doing right there, and that's where that lower ankle. That, uh, that inner ankle will be. So notice the change in the difference. It makes a, uh, uh, a heck of a lot, a tremendous amount of, I think, difference with respect to the drawing. Now this is on shadow a little bit. We'll pull that back. <clears throat> and we can come down, we see this ankle, that angle, that ankle's on the outside a little bit. Okay, and over. So the, we see the diagonal, and that's still true, and it's also related by the shadow underneath that. So we can pull this ankle, this malleolus on the outside, over right in through there, okay? So we have that shadow in through there, and then we can reevaluate our foot, so that's going to make it just a little bit shorter. So we'll come in through here, get that foot going, okay? And over around. Kind of the area where that big toe is going to be. Right in through there. We'll kind of just shorthand some of this. Right in through here. On around a nice bulgy sort of um, egg form. Right in through there. And we also know that again the end of the foot over through here will just kind of relate the curve. Right in through here, right, is going to be now. <clears throat> With those toes, we'll just I'll just gesture all that down, not to do all that for time's sake. We see that the end of that foot is slightly right, slightly um, further than the back. Let's check it. That's what I see in the image. So let's see if we if I got that right. If not, I just make a correction. It looks like it did. True vertical, right in through there, just slightly past that. Take a look at that, and there we are right there. So slightly past, which that works nicely for us. Okay. So this is what goes on in our mind. This is what's happening in my mind. This is what it looks like in my mind when I draw. The drawing, the finished drawing, this is a diagrammatic educational drawing. It's, that's not what it looks like, right? But what we're trying to do here is for those of you that are just beginning your figure drawing journey, and some of you are already pretty good, is this technique gives you much more power. Some of you are already using it and you didn't even know it. Now, hopefully, you do, and you have a lot more uh, to work with in terms of your drawing intelligence. Let's, fi let's finish out this uh, other arm and then we'll go on to another one so what we have we don't burn out too too much time here so we have the pillow which is roughly in that crease no it's underneath the buttock that's right it's sitting right in through here a little bit so we have that there that's where that pillow the widening of that is underneath here a little bit okay so we have that coming over and then we'll finish that roughly here by so that's some distant shadow and so that arm, we're going to have a little negative space underneath this, this uh, oblique right in through here where this arm is going to come down. You know, so where, where does the arm emerge from the back? How do we know it's true? Well, we can say, okay, let's look at the image, and it's right about, I think it's here, but if we draw a horizontal line across, okay, it pretty much aligns with where the kind of the nipple and that tricep is right in through here, isn't it? On that line, about where the chin is, maybe a little bit further out. So let's do that. So right in through there, that's what I see. And that helps me do two things. It helps me get a feeling of where things are obviously at. And using that true horizontal in my mind shows me that that's where that back part of the arm. Of course, the shoulder, because here's this. Here's the shoulder here. Here's the deltoid, right, of the figure here, okay? Right in through there. And then as it emerges outward from the scapula area, 
through the back scapula. It starts with the tricep right about here, and so we get right underneath, roughly right in through there. Okay, coming. Over. I'm going to leave that line, maybe just a little bit lower, but roughly right in through there, and that's how we get that feeling or that measuring part of what we want to do with that, with that, um, in respect to horizontal, vertical and diagonal alignment. So now we can come over and say, okay, this is where we truly wanted the end of the shoulder and part of the arm to be coming over, right in through there. So we kept the gesture, right? We're missing the hand a little bit. And then we, we see that this arm bulges down here, pretty bulky still up and around here. Here's the joint. The joint is probably about right here for the, uh, the elbow, because when we get the forearm coming about right here, okay, this bulkier part, so that's a little tough part of the drawing, and we'll just put it in the shadow like the other part. Okay, we can bring it arm down, bulge, then the lower part of the forearm here, okay, here, and then over, and then get him just started with his what, which is going to be the hand coming right through there. And then we've got a very nice little sliver of negative space we can use to help us get this third kind of ball egg form going. And then we'll square out right in through there. And then we have what is a nice, all that can be pushed back in shadow, which is a nice kind of finish to this diagram right in through there. And there you go. So that's our first um, diagrammatic drawing showing you what the mind looks like um, when we draw the model and what how it manifests out now to the the figure of course you'll be doing you know kind of finished looking obviously drawings but again this this works really nicely and helps solidify and keep along with scale and proportion really begins to keep things in control and you start to get control with your figure which is what which is what you want okay all right let's go on to our next study all right now for our second drawing here of three let's work with this uh, classic kind of El Greco Spanish uh, Renaissance late Renaissance early Baroque painter and uh, really uh, some martyr here um, nice, beautiful pose. You notice the head's a little small. That's kind of typical of El Greco. So let's make sure that we at least notice that and we can use that. So the first thing, you know, I look at and think about here is the, um, this wonderful diagonal that happens from the shoulder to shoulder. So look at that diagonal. How do I know to get that diagonal? Well, the first thing I do is I measure it against in my mind actually against the horizontal of the paper here, right? So I look at that in my mind, or any horizontal against that. I project in my mind right in through here, right? It doesn't exist in that painting, but it exists in my mind to measure against it. And so that helps me decide and locate what's going on with this this angle, this, this first kind of axis to help me get, say, okay, well there's the hand up and through here, and then this all flows from that shoulder to the opposite shoulder. And then I have to figure out, okay, kind of where I want to put that head. Now the hand will put roughly in through here, right? Now it falls higher than the head, right? So here's the, the ultimate top line for the hand, kind of where that arrow is, as a matter of fact, well, the head's going to have to come lower, isn't it? Well, that's got to be lower, so that space is probably right in through here, isn't it? And so right off the bat, gesture you're going to be using this, volumetric figure, sketching like we're doing for diagrams or understanding, all that's going to make uh, an important contribution. So the head, the gesture, is roughly going to be right in through here. So we'll put his head on an axis, uh, chin there, okay, oval, right in through here, right? So we've got that. Eye line roughly right in through here. Okay, we can figure that out 
nose line kind of turned up curved because we're seeing it up turned over uh, uh, mouth a little bit ear we'll just mark where the ears are going to be later on just kind of using symbols this is not detailed drawing by any stretch of the imagination we're horizontal vertical alignment learning here mark of that chin okay so that makes now his hand make a lot more sense now. so now we have this flowy gesture where we could get to that hand later as it kind of curves downward. And the tips of the fingers are about where the top of the head are. So maybe even a little bit later on, a little bit higher. We'll come down with the shoulder. So that's how you can discover and use already horizontal and vertical and also diagonal line of it. Because here's the rough placement, right, of that diagonal, right? right there isn't it there it is right there in black okay so when you're sketching with me drawing these make sure that you mark these i really in in my students at nku i really want to see those diagonals i want to see those verticals and horizontals that you're you're utilizing so here we have the neck gesture and so we'll come down and look at the center of that torso from the sternum over it really gets as far out doesn't it so we come over and through here, and then we can also kind of figure out where the end of that chest is, that barrel of the rib cage, right? Right in through, kind of get a feeling for the width, and that could be a vertical line. Kind of right in through here, we can see where that falls, okay? Which falls roughly <clears throat> about um, a, a third of the way to the to the end of the hand, so maybe I could bring that in a little bit in my mind. So that's I think right in through here is where the end of that rib cage would fall. Okay, now we're we're diagramming this. It's a slower process. When you're drawing for yourself, it's going to be a lot. This goes a lot faster. Okay, so we have that coming through. We feel this. We feel the center of our of our gesture coming in through. Then we start to take a dive back in, don't we? Okay, belly button, and then we're going to feel the bottom of the pelvic uh, region with the cloth, the loincloth, about right in through here. Then we can start to feel where the uh, hip to hip is. And it's not straight across, a little higher to the left, isn't it? To the right. So that diagonal is about right the movement of that and the feeling for that is roughly about right here. Okay, so there's that alignment there. And if you get it wrong, you can you can certainly uh, change it. Don't be afraid to always make a feeling for change. Okay, so we have that. Then we can start to come out and say, okay, here's the gesture. Our next design line, long, lean. We can curve this over for the leg. And where is the knee, the end of the knee, the total end of the knee in relationship to the end of the hand? That knee cups inside of that hand. So if we drew in our mind, and now we'll put it on paper where the tips of the fingers would be all the way down, that's kind of the far edge of the, the figure, isn't it? So right down and through here, make sure that's in camera. Right in through there, isn't it? So we know we've got to get that knee a little bit on the inside. And it's probably you know, measuring about right in through here where the forearm is. So we've got to bring that down roughly, maybe a little bit more. Or right about in through here where the end of that knee would be. So that means that my gesture it's got to come on down a little bit lower, doesn't it? Right in through there. I'm going to put the end of that knee, I'm going to mark it, right in through there, and then it's going to come back up, isn't it? That gesture is going to flow here, and then it's going to come back and over, and we're going to get that ankle roughly coming back in through here with that gesture. So there's that movement, boom, that zigzaggy, beautiful kind of curve, and the foot's going to tuck and do something right in through there with that and now that that um that ain't the ankle here the heel it aligns up with about middle roughly to 
O outer edge of the head, so right in through there. So I might have that, I could go a little bit longer with it, maybe right in through there. So it really kind of lines up with this outer part of the nose, and right there is where it would do coming down. So right in through there. So make this a little bit longer where that ankle and foot is. El Greco is known for elongated figures and small heads. It's pretty unusual for the time, really any time. So he's very well known uh, for that in, in, in uh, Spanish drama, if you will, whatever that means. The Spanish are wonderful. I have a couple of Spanish friends uh, um, from Barcelona. Okay, so we have, um, and I've been to Barcelona several times, I highly recommend it. All right, so that's where we have that ankle placement. Now let's take a look at the other leg. So we notice now that, what do we notice about our diagonal alignment? And you'll use diagonal alignment quite a bit. Notice that this knee, this bottom of the knee roughly, is higher than this knee, okay? So uh, we have our alignment now, not by a whole lot, but enough to make a difference. So here's that diagonal alignment line, right in through there, right? So we see that emerging in through here. And <clears throat> the end of the leg, okay, the hip, right in through here, okay, we're coming over, finding the end of our leg to the buttock region, and that really begins about right in through here. So we've got a good alignment with just slightly inside the head. They don't blind to the outside. Nothing is necessarily perfect. And that's why we're, we judge this to see where we're at with our alignment, right? So we know to start our leg higher here. Roughly here's our gesture for that. Knee located roughly lower than the other one, just by just a slight amount. So we have our gesture of this leg coming down here. Okay, we'll get that thickness later. That's just the gesture, the inside movement. Then we have this beautiful curvature of the tibia fibia, slight foreshortening down we coming out. And we notice that the foot is going to be the widest area of the figure right later on, or excuse me, not later on, but, <laughs> but now to the left of the figure. So the end of the toes there breaking out just slightly down on that image will put us about half a head or so, maybe a little bit more um, on the outer edge uh, from the head. And so that's quickly how we judge it. And this happens lightning fast. We're slowing this down very slowly. We're making it very slow so that you can see what this technique is. When you're drawing well, you're getting accurate with scale and proportion and angles, you're doing this and you may not even know it. As a matter of fact, I don't think about it when I draw. I just draw and it works out because my goodness, I've been, I'm 50 now, 50 and a half actually, and I've been drawing for, uh, since I was about four or five, and so a long time. Doesn't mean you can't get good pretty quick, but I've been doing a long time. So there we have that gesture, so things are starting to come into good focus with the figure, and now we can take shoulder to shoulder here, here we'll mark that shoulder, mark the shoulder a little bit further. Take a look at this angle that we see from the neck here, from the back of the tra trapezius downward, it really plunges, doesn't it? So we see this, this ankle, excuse me, we see this, um, not ankle, but this angle really move in that direction, right? And so look how quickly gesture and uh, horizontal vertical alignment work together. Now the shoulder bulges a little bit outside of, right, the, the head, okay? And so we'll pull it just a little bit out and it's going to tuck back in that gesture. We'll tuck back in, okay? Where does that elbow end? So right in through here, about right in through there, uh, okay, across. 
let's draw a horizontal line and see if it lines up to where we want with the image in our model. Okay, that's just what I would project in my mind very quickly, and we see that that's going pretty well. Here's our center line in through here, coming down to what will be the end of our pelvis unit where that tunic is, or that little cloth, one cloth, running through there. And that feels pretty good where that bulky shoulder is. It might be a little bit longer coming in, and it really tucks in and ends, doesn't it, about right behind that ear, right in through. So you can see that. Let me draw that too, so we don't leave anything uh, to chance right in through there. Take a look at that. how nice that uh, lines up. That's pretty sophisticated. There's a lot of stuff going on with laying in that figure. Okay, okay, and so um, you know, quite a bit of that is is certainly um, difficult, and this gives you a much stronger opportunity now to really uh, figure some of this out and get this more accurately. So let's just solidify up our figure a little bit. Let's give it a little bit more of a, of a, a figurative look here. We won't go too much further, but we'll go past just the initial sort of gesture and through here. Kind of a shorthand sketching technique. And through here, nothing crazy. And we'll just throw in little divots for the eyes. You can just put little kind of a tone in through here, the eyes coming over, really curving down. We're just getting the shape of the of the whole mass in through there. To here. Through there, coming around the neck. Coming through. Okay. Neck over here. <clears throat> Landing on the sternum. Connecting to the sternum. Right in through there. There we go. Let's get some of this form. We have the clavicles coming over. Bicycle handlebars, the old tummy bikes, and through there. So let's feel that sternum come through here. And we'll feel that the center line of the entire gesture of the model come through downward <clears throat> and over to past the belly button. The belly button's a little bit lower than just barely the angle of the, where the um, elbow is. So that tells us we're on a good path. Right in through there, then over, then we can start to feel that cloth come back up. Okay, through there. And we'll start to feel this, this rib cage out. Feel that line of being around and over. Here's the other side of that rib cage pectoral region. Notice that the nipples are very much in alignment with the um, angle, the diagonal here of the shoulders and also the, the, uh, the other part of the chest. That's a natural kind of uh, a happenstance for sure. Okay, so we have that coming through. Pectoral there, keeping this very soft so we don't get bogged down with any detail yet at all. Okay, into the rib cage, turning over, cutting through a little bit, right in through here. This gets us around and over, okay, up and through the end of the rectus abdominis in through here and over. Okay, right in through there, really gaunt, in through there, and on the other side. And what we see is now that inclusion now of that hip, right in through there. It's going to be pooched out, so we see that angle right in through there. So we get this, okay, to this that works on our diagonal line right in through here, which we were accurate uh, with, okay, in our drawing that made it work for us there. <clears throat> so we have that. Through here, we'll come down with this hip and over. Okay, we have that. And okay, we can come in, get up into here, and get to the little one cloth and its angle, that diagonal, the flow of that, that gesture of that will be up and around. Okay, we'll get that feeling in through here. We'll bring it, we'll come over and around, we'll cut that leg over and through here and around. 
Okay, we'll just get the feeling of that coming through to cover up the private area, the genitals. Do there. Okay. <clears throat> and then around. And so we now have a good a good place to hold right in through there. It's, it's not necessarily known where the pelvic complete bottom part is, but we can get a good feeling that's probably right. In through there. Okay, so we have that. And now we can get now a good feeling of the leg coming over the end of the leg. It really picks up, watch this. So see this diagonal angle that I can pick up right in through here where the oblique ends. Right in through here we get the almost the start of the adductors. We get this pelvic notch in through here downward. But look at this. See how this angle of the, the inner area, the pelvic crest of in through here? It's up a little bit higher, but bowls in and around. But look at this angle here downward. So let's make a big note of that. Here, it follows the gesture, but it's the outer part of this, or the inner part of this thigh. Look at that come down. Do you see that? How that diagonal flows through there? So we get that diagonal flowing, which gives us our leg, and we can start to feel that tube of the leg or the box, however you want to handle it, right in through there. Coming down, we can feel the end of that knee. To there, right? <clears throat> Coming on over and getting the thigh, top of the leg. The El Greco keeps his models very long, very lean, male or female, right in through here. Get that bulge, sartorius area, and then we come over to the end of the knee, which feels pretty good, doesn't it? in our drawing, not bad. So we did a good job, I think, of our measuring, of getting our measuring to work for us there, okay? <clears throat> and so you can see where we have a really good place to understand and take our, take our drawing in through here. So we see that through that kneecap, and then we'll take the foreshortening now back up and around. So we figure out Kind of bring down where the end of that leg is. See that there underneath that loin cloth? Let me make that a little, a little stronger into here. Get a little shading in there. I'll have to do kind of shading and sort of a kind of a contour shorthand to make it feel a little more, a little bit more volumetric. Right through there. So we have that. And so we see this ankle now about right in through here. So we have Pretty good beat it. The changes made sense. Remember a little bit earlier. So now we have this bulgy calf, elongated, coming down, right? We're underneath here. We want to keep that angle back, right? So we have that coming through, bulgy, running through here. We feel that egg form through there, like El Greco did. The thigh is in front, right in through here, the bulgy part going behind and over. Okay, we feel that up into the ankle, about right in through here, okay, in this area, just a little bit, it's good to feel that, come across, and then we can end this, uh, the lower leg in through here, where the soleus and gastro come down to the Achilles, and then over back up a little bit, and then we get to the true Achilles, right in through here, don't we, so we see that ankle, and so see how it all, it all got placed nicely because of good horizontal and vertical alignment. So it's working, it's feeding all in together, isn't it? It's coming together in a nice way and we don't have to struggle. Um, because the, again, this angle of our, the back leg is here, right? It's coming back in space here for sure. Um, it can't be straight across anatomically, that would just not work. But we know that because we can thrust this horizontal and compare it here at the bottom of the knee with that too, right? And so we know that this angle, look at the difference, the spatial difference. And that's the power uh, of horizontal, vertical, and diagonal alignment. And when you take all these lines away, it just, it makes sense and it reads like, you know, a normal 
a normative, you know, kind of drawing, drawing experience. Okay, so let's finish this little leg out here and foot out here a little bit. So we'll come over. Okay, we've got that ankle in here. <clears throat> Come down, we know that it finishes on, on an angle. We see that, look at that, that angle right there. I'm going to draw it black, keep it consistent. So we know it's going to end there, right on this angle, from that, from that knee, right? So we have that. That's where the, the, the proximal toe joint is. And then we have the big toe. I'm just going to simplify all this, kind of gesture it out, right in through here. And we get it back underneath. Okay, and over with the foot and kind of up and through here. And there's a little bit extra in through there, so we're just going to kind of leave it. There is a gesture for now. So we get that big toe working for us. And then we come back and feel this end of this ankle right in through here, up and over. Okay. <clears throat> Strong kind of curvature to it. And we see where that loincloth now came through, right? And we've got that good negative space starting to work, you know, for us in our in our sketch. Look at that. See that works out, starting to work out much, much nicer now. So we used our horizontal work alignment. So we'll finish the back of the of the foot here to the Achilles and up and over. And it worked out pretty well. And then we'll just kind of turn this shading and give a little contour to make that feel uh, more natural through there. And well, let's do a little bit of this lower leg and then we'll, we'll leave the rest of it. I think you can understand here. We'll finish this out a little bit. So let's start this leg. And we see now coming over, we've got this nice pelvic divot in through here. We come over with some of the... Um, Tensor fascia lato over here. And we're coming through, and we got this curve. So we've got the end of the thigh, right? Right about a budding to uh, here. Okay, so now we, that means we got to get thicker, right? Over here with the thigh coming through. Really, He really pushes that curve, doesn't he? Really strongly, very, very kind of classic El Greco. So this is big, strong curve in through here. Then we can bring this inner thigh over to the loincloth. Okay, right in through there. That's going to come inside. You can't really see it, but that thickness will continue to about right here where the adductors are, which connect up to the, the, uh, the pelvis there. It's going to come over, okay, and around. Okay, up and through here and over, in case we see that. Coming down, okay. <clears throat> so this is kind of an awkward little anatomical you know, space from my mind that El Greco does, but he does it and, it, and it ultimately it works. I think it's a little awkward, but, you know, El Greco's got a pretty big reputation, so I think we're going to go and say, I guess it really does work. Right in through here, okay, coming down. There's our leg coming through, see how easy it was? Now we've got the the end of the knee now, remember, over here, because we kind of, we marked it, right? So that patella, or the kneecap, is on that angle. See how that works out? It's working out pretty well for us. Okay. <clears throat> we put a little bit of this coming down. Just to get a little bit of this working through. Maybe this rock that he's, that's what this is, is a rock. Doesn't seem like it would be very comfortable. But he is being martyred, so I guess comfort is not... One of the considerations, unfortunately. Okay, so we have that. And so we have this thigh moving here, right? Then we come on out. Okay, and over. And around. Pretty wild looking. Two here. We get that tendon here on the outside. <coughs> Vastus uh, lateralis. And we get a little bit of that condyle with the tibia fibula area. Okay. Then we can put a little bit of that kneecap if you want. You can see it hanging out there. See how it's kind of a triangular shape that floats? That patella region, that little bone. Right into there, around. We'll 
put that on there and makes it makes it work out. Put a little bit of this muscle to make it feel right. Okay. <clears throat> and now let's end it here by just going a little bit for this lower leg. I mean, the kneeling point of the tibia, fibula, tibia area, tibular area. And then we have this nice divot in through here. Then we have the bulge now of the calf, pretty strongly. But we see that strong angle, you know, in between here. So what we want, another alignment line, we can see this coming out pretty strongly, is what I look at is this kind of space. See the space in between here and here? We want that calf over here, since it's pretty bulgy, to get close to that line so that this space right in through here if there was a string attached to his uh, leg would get us back to all, all the way to that foot so that's going to be very important right in that drawing so we're really going to have to and it does it really pushes watch this boom look at that ankle excuse me the um, calf really pull over in that thickness because it really starts to come over in that foreshortened way this is bone in through here and then we see the bulge now of the, of the calf on this side. So it's an egg form. So emphasize that by drawing through it. Right in through here, right? Boom. Look at that. Very strong kind of feeling. And then we can just put that in the shadow if you want. Right in through there. Okay. Then we come on down and through. And over another bulge. These muscles tend to bulge out, not, not in here, and then we come over again. And it really tapers. See the taper? So this line tells us, our diagonal alignment line really tell, tells us there. And then we get to that beautiful outer malleoline line of the ankle. Right through there, right? We see that bulge out. Okay, we come in here. <clears throat> The inner one's a little higher, but it's it's pushed back. We don't get to we won't see it as a higher one, actually. Most people think that the outer ankle is higher up. It's not your inner one actually. It's the medial malleolus. Pretty cool. Okay, so we I think we're doing pretty good here with this spacing in between that we wanted, right? So we get that. And I'm gonna make this just a little a little bit thicker. It needs to be. Doesn't it? Just a little, a little thicker over here. I think that's going to help. Okay. <clears throat> Just a touch. <clears throat> Let's pull this around just a little bit, make it feel like a bowl. Just some con general contouring right in through here. And then lastly, with this foot coming down, we get this ankle coming in and over. And out, and I'll just be a little bit cropped in through here, so we'll just gesture that in. And we we got that, and we got that foot now sitting, resting well far outside where we wanted to, didn't didn't we? Where we needed it to be. So our horizontal and our vertical and our diagonal alignment really worked worked well for us in this case. All right, I want to go on to one more. We'll use our own NKU model. Brian here for this last one. You, you, a lot of you know who, who Brian is. You had some, some working with him before. So let's do one more here and investigate that. All right, here's our last one. So we've got an image now of the model reclining, and um, we're going to now work in a more kind of horizontal um, configuration with our, our paper where our picture plane is positioned. This presents some challenges. He's fairly elongated. There's a very nice design line for the gesture. Do you see it? From the head, which we'll place here, rolling all the way through the small of the back, down through the buttock, but then back up to the thigh, to the knee, and then out to the ankle and the foot. It's a very long, elegant design line. And then that's counterbalanced by his hand on his head to the elbow, through the shoulder and back to the other elbow and then out to the arm so we get that counterbalancing, which works really, really nicely. So, let's analyze and draw this pose. The first thing I look for and with gesture, design line, and horizontal and vertical alignment, let's just get the spirit of the pose in one 
our four or five long lines right here, down through, right, so maybe the buttock and through here. Look at that long line, just kind of marking where the axis of the buttock would flow through here, up and over, okay, up and over to where the knee would be roughly. Look at that long flowy line knee to the leg out, to the ankle of the foot would be out somewhere like that. Look at that long cradling kind of flow. And then we get that counterbalance right in through here of the shoulder to the elbow coming this way from elbow. I'm kind of looking at from elbow to elbow coming down here. Notice I'm not getting it right all the time. I'm just getting a feel for it. Keeping it light and loose. Getting a feel for that rhythm and movement. Okay, elbow I think might be over here downward and through, and then the hand might be, might be somewhere through here. A lot, of, a lot of opportunities to change that now, okay? So we know that now using gesture and horizontal vertical alignment that the head will put up fairly high. It's the highest part right in the composition. And we can put a vertical line just to tell us that. That's where the tip of the head will be. And we can use that later on to judge anything that we want against that high, that high part, the hand, the head, and also that little part of the hand that cradles the head right in through here, right? So we can say that that might be where we want it. So we can get a feeling of the highest part of the head. We know he's on an angle, right? His head's down because we can see that sort of moving in this direction. Okay, we can see that coming through and coming through and over and so now we might get a feel for how far down is that elbow from the tip of the head well it's not that far down this might be the the where the the elbow is here and here's the gesture coming back over right and we're going to flow all the way down to the other elbow so as i'm flowing down i'm thinking about where that elbow is and that's a diagonal alignment line so if we took that alignment and just uh, made it into one long line, it might look something like that. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. How do I get from this point to this point in the drawing? This is a bony landmark, by the way. That's in the scale and proportion landmarks of the figure video. How do I get from this elbow to that elbow? but in a beautiful, flowy way with the gesture. So it takes into account, remember, the inside-out quality of the gesture inside the form, over to the shoulders, shoulder to shoulder. Here's kind of the shoulder. Here's the other shoulder, slightly lower and tucked right, right in through here, okay? And then over and downward to that other elbow. That's probably going to be decent. I won't know until I continue drawing, and then we get the gesture back in, downward to the hand, and the hand will sit roughly right in through here, and then the edge of the hand is still going to be enough spatial distance from the neck. So this might come in actually a little bit, this, this uh, uh, forearm, and put the outer edge of the hand maybe right into here, but it is at an angle, so we want that elbow to be the widest point of our model on the right. So the end of the hand might be about right here, and so if we draw a little line, okay, on our paper, and later on you just use your mind to help you. Okay, if you're having trouble, then you're not using horizontal, vertical, vertical diagonal alignment, um, and uh, uh, you're not being careful enough, I think that's a good way to say it. So we have that, so we can, we can figure there's enough space in between of where that head's going to be tilted downward, right? Right in through here, okay? Hand on the head, right, roughly in through here. So there's that, where's that? That head is right in through here, and if we draw through that entire body, the chin's going to get tucked far away and probably be somewhere roughly down in through here. If I use a triangle for profile, roughly right in through here, up, and over, here's the back tip of the head, the highest point, and of course the hand now will be over it, roughly right in through there. So already we're starting to get some good alignment. Now a couple things you can use, too, is that the chest area, it's not quite straight, it's a little curved, but notice how it's right around where the head ends. So right in through here is a nice little 
alignment uh, tool for us. Sometimes it aligns, sometimes it doesn't. We, we, we want to look at all that. So writing through there is a good point. In through here. So notice how we can be curved with that um, ribcage chest area. Okay, And then also the same thing of the gesture. Not only the flow of the back, the center part of the back, that beautiful center. Look how it really, really flows through that gesture right in through there. Okay, that buttock is going to be down in here somewhere. So we flow through there, don't we? Right in through there. Now let's find a little bit of that outer area as we start to feel that gesture. Right in through there. We know that that outer area is a pretty good way. It's inside the hand a little bit. It's coming out here a little further. Okay, neck coming down. Right in through here, probably where it connects to the shoulder. Roughly right in through there, so that curvature of his body about right in through here, coming through and over, and then we start to see this beautiful part of the line of being right in through here, okay, of the figure, about right in through there. Thickness of the arm will come out in a little bit. It's not quite straight, slightly in a slightly in an angle, excuse me, slightly there. So let me draw that that thrust line of that gesture a little bit so it's slightly angled. You can see it that way. Okay, so now we're curving over, coming through. Okay, feeling that barrel of that chest. And this will probably be too long, probably a little bit too long. I can already tell, that's okay. So right in through, in through here, we see that curving over where that oblique cr uh, creases into the rib cage. Right in through here. Here's the spinal region that's gonna be through be coming up and over to the shoulder later on. We can just get a feel for that gesture. This arm coming up and over. See how it's starting to come together for us already? Hopefully, you can see that. Okay. <clears throat> then kind of where that arm emerges, this opening of where the back touches this, this uh, part of the arm and through here, and I'm looking over where this arm connects to the shoulder the you know, deltoid and the scapula region about right in through there. Can we start to see that? See how this starting to place nicely. Now one thing I look at is I notice, okay, where does the end of the elbow mark here? And where, I'm going to draw in my mind a straight line downward. Okay, but I'll do it on the paper again because we're making, again, this is so, so important, we're making manifest on the paper what we generally want to do mostly in our mind, okay? And so when I see that, I see that line here, and it's about middle thigh, isn't it? It doesn't really align with too much, kind of like the, the top crest of the thigh a little bit. So I know then that the knee, watch this, that the knee is outward from the end of that elbow, isn't it? Right in through here, and outward and over. I was pretty, pretty close in through here. So we've got one alignment to look for. Okay, we may be right in through here, I'm thinking. But also, now, what happens horizontal? We have the vertical. What happens horizontal? What does that knee line up with? Not too much, the tip of that knee, but it is slightly under where the elbow crease will be about right in through here. So if I draw a straight line in my mind, but now we'll put on paper, and that's pretty good. I'm underneath that elbow. That's where I want to be. That's pretty nice. Look at that. That aligns. It's going to align where I want it to be pretty decently. And so do you see the feeling that we're getting with, remember that first diagram that I showed you right in the beginning with all those grid lines and now we're starting to do that. It's in your mind. It stays in your mind. You can sketch it on paper lightly and it'll disappear when you, when you do a finished drawing, right? But it's there. It's, and it's what and how, our, how we use two-dimensional horizontal, vertical, and alignment techniques to help us grid out or vector, if you will, 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 uh, will <laughs> the way things uh, can line up. So right here is the tip of the knee. Of course, we'll get a, a thicker leg coming up here in a moment. So let's feel now this buttock. So we're coming down and through here. The buttock to the hand is going to be lower than. Sam. So we're going to feel that. Where is the edge of the buttock now in relationship to everything? Well, I'm starting to feel this negative space here and here. I'm starting to feel this down 
and we're going to cut off now the buttock and we're going to just show it, okay? Right, because we've got a, full, a fuller part of the buttock because he's showing a big part of the thigh that's being pushed up this way in terms of the gesture, right? Up to here, to the tip of the knee, and then outward here, right? But it's going to get bulkier because of the, of, of the uh, position. Right in through here, over, right, and then it's kind of the thickness that's going to be right in through there. So, what we see now coming through is where does the bottom arc of the buttock sit? So one good place is to show that is underneath this hand where it sits. That's a good place where I relate to in bringing that line across, right? Right in through there, okay? Here and here. And then I see, okay, how much further is this hand higher than the bottom of the buttock? Well, the buttock, the hand comes all the way over, and it's actually higher than where the buttocks, the crack of the butt splits in two, right? And so the the uh, glute splitting doesn't really happen until about right here, right? Lower than here, about right in through here, and it happens about where the inside ear is on the head. So how about that for some cool uh, arranging too. So the ear now, if we have the shoulder coming up, will be about right roughly here. We'll get that sort of question mark shape going in through. About right in through there will be the ear, right? Right in through there. And so about the end of the tip of that ear on the front, watch this. See how we can use so many things. Now, with horizontal and vertical, vertical alignment, you can use it drawing letter forms. You can use it drawing facial forms, the minutia of facial, all kinds of detail. So it really helps. So uh, we're going to bring this uh, in a little bit, right in through there. And that gives us the, the spar of the split of the left glute, right in through there, okay, and over. Okay, there's where that buttock is as it crests over. Okay, and it's going to crest in before the elbow too as well, uh, quite a bit. So it's it's a little bit pushed over, I think. Here, I want to push that over from that ear just a little bit. I might have been too too liberal with that. Right in through here, okay? <clears throat> and also lower than the hand, so down a little bit lower. So probably right in through here is where it's going to, I feel like that's going to be a more acceptable range for that buttock. There we go. Right in through that, that area. Then we have the lower part of the buttock coming down. That's going to get us to that lower edge. Okay, right in through there. Bingo. There we are. Okay, we feel that curve coming back up. There's a little space between that. Arm and the buttock right in through there. So we're in a pretty good, pretty good place, right, aren't we? With respect to the arm and the hand. I'll just lightly sort of angle out this gesture a little bit so we can see this a little clearly. Anytime you can see it better, you want to do that. Here's the elbow in through here that's feeling pretty good. Kind of in line, and slightly maybe just a little bit above. That curve. Now, sometimes I don't get it exactly right. I don't fret over it. I don't want you to fret over it. It's, if it's close, if it's in the ballpark, it's going to be fine. It's a drawing, and you're going to make changes and little movements. It's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect. You just don't want, for instance, if this could go lower, it's fine. I'm going to leave it. But you don't want it way down here. That would be wrong if it's down by the butt split. But if it's way up here, that's a problem, too. You want to be in a close, close range. I think that's going to, going to be... Uh, Probably one of the most important things that I can say, and this is this technique is is the one that helps do that. So we'll get this arm coming down here, and then we can move the hand uh, behind that and over and through. And so now I think we're feeling feeling this pretty good. We can get this coming down over the the uh, erector spinae muscle in through here, and then now we can get to where that split of the buttock would be. Right in through here. I don't want to get too detailed because we want to make sure we're aligned with everything else. Kind of around, back over. It feels pretty good. And that buttock would be here, over, 
and, and probably with that leg is going to later on get to start to kind of just smooth it out a little to clean it up a little bit. It's a little bit confusing. And we've got that darker spot where it really hits the ground about right there where that shadow. So that shadow begins where it takes off right into the there. That's where he's really sitting down on the on the platform there. He did such a beautiful job for us taking these reference photos. Okay, so now we can bring up this leg. This knee feels pretty good, doesn't it? We have this angle here. I'm going to bring out the uh, the elbow a little bit wider. I think it needs to go a little wider. You can always adjust. Always adjust. Don't be afraid to to um, be satisfied with what you have if it's wrong. That's the biggest thing I can say. Is don't don't accept your your mistakes. Try to correct them. And then if they're not big deal, if they're no big deal, then you don't need don't worry about changing them if they're close in the ballpark. If it if it satisfies the aesthetic of the drawing. That's a little hard, hard to determine. And I'll help you guys determine that. Those are my students in class. Okay, we're bringing out this a little bit where the scapula would be. Get that shoulder as it comes, that deltoid comes in, connects up to and around part of the scapula and the clavicle. Right in through there. So that's feeling pretty good. And I get the um, tricep and just a little bit more through there, coming downward. <clears throat> there we go. So we've got that hand coming out. I'll go ahead and put the arm on, this uh, forearm on as it bulges. Here, coming over to part of it's hidden around up, and then we'll put the hand on, just uh, give it a shorthand angle in through here. Okay, we don't want to get into all that detail for now, it's way too much. But you can use horizontal and vertical alignment for the hands, you can use it for everything, and that's the, that's the trick is to use it for everything that you've got running through here. Okay, and that's it's a little much on there. There we go. So I'm going to bring this in a little bit flatter. Okay, and pull this over with that wrist. That wrist could be, just, this could be a little bit higher with that shoulder coming over. So we see that. <clears throat> So now let's get, let's take a look at this leg and through here so we can kind of get this gesture and pose a little bit more finalized and through here. We're coming down to the knee. Here this feels pretty good. We want this, this knee, we notice that it's lower than the elbow, right? Okay. And it's also this little area higher than the hand. We've got that located pretty well and we can start to get into its thickness and through here. Once you get that located, you're really kind of on your way to getting getting it resolved a little further. We can get this leg going through here. So it's gesturally it kind of attaches right in through there. <clears throat> and we can see where it attaches up and through here. And a good place where it attaches, we can use that as an alignment line right in through here and it attaches past the elbow. If we align it up, which it does, we can see that it attaches past there. Kind of just draw it up all the way through. Just kind of end it with arrows. So that was a good alignment. We've pretty much got that, you know, where we wanted to in our drawing. <clears throat> kind of the uh, trochanter poking out a little bit running through this, this region roughly here. Bleak last part of the bleed to the pelvis region. <clears throat> then we can get that shadow in here a little bit, get this profile of the chest to the pectoral that's hanging a little bit there. So we can see that kind of come on over. Once we do that, <clears throat>
Okay. So we ride through the left buttock, in through here, coming over. As we make this now, we can start to really tighten this through here a little bit. And we can kind of get this hamstring now coming over. That starts to pull in, attaches, that glute attaches to the uh, femur there, back to the, the femur. And we come over with this hamstring. Whoops, broke a, broke a pencil. I think I did. A little bit, yeah, I did. Okay, through. Cut another one, just in case. And over. This will attach back up, and this pulls around. We see that pull around, not that important for now. Okay. So we're almost there. Let's go ahead and complete this lower area, and we'll tighten this up a little bit. I think we'll be just about done. Completely, this longer lesson, an important one. I can't emphasize how much this is important. Very much. Okay, coming through here. Down. So this lower leg now, so we've got a couple things to think about in terms of its angle, so we use the gesture here. As we're moving through here, Okay, over and through, we're going to be lower than the buttock. So our buttock line, I may I raise it up a little bit to adjust. So we'll put it back now and we'll say, okay, where he's resting on that platform, and we'll pull it all the way over here, right? To to make a judgment call. And what we see what you see is it's about at that inner Oh, a little bit lower where the calf starts to curve in a little bit. So we're going to be longer in through here for sure. We've got to go longer in that. And so that, that calf bulge here and over and around is pretty long as it's coming towards us and gets a little bit bigger. And so we have probably a little, we want to about too long there. Okay, we have that coming in. Wrapping up and through and over. And we start to see this here. We have that the apex of the calf right into the coming down to the back part of the gastrocnemius and through here. And so I'll probably um, uh, looking at that, this is pr probably about right where that where that is is a little bit or that where he sits there. A little bit lower than the when the turn of the, the major part of the of the gastrocnemius. That's so gonna work out for us, I think, pretty well. Into here, I'm just gonna shade down this part of the shadow in the buttocks just a little bit to make that work. A little bit better for us. <clears throat> and so this seems to be working now with the calf and through here, where we want it to be, pulling down, do that leg. Okay, and around and over. And that leg is going to end, that ankle is going to end pretty, pretty low down here. It's probably going to be roughly about riding through here. If we bring that over, it would have about this much space, wouldn't it, in between. So we've got over here and just feeling that measuring in our mind. I'll just make it you know, in, on the paper, obviously. That's where that ankle would roughly wind up being right in through there. I'm going to leave it for the this, for this sake of time and just tighten up a little bit. But we're, we're really, really nicely, I think, got everything that we wanted for the most part in here. This little part where the gastrocnemius separates from the side muscles in through here. Tibialis, fibularis, longus, and brevis there on the side. Mm -hmm. right through here. We'll separate that patella just a little bit and we'll turn this over. A little contouring. <clears throat> a little bit more dramatic curving play in through here. I want to go higher with this this leg a little bit. This thigh needs to come up a little bit here. 
so we really get that into more context and play. And then we can just put a little bit of contour across, cross contour to make that feel whole. Same thing at the bottom. Just to give that little bit of shadow playing through there. <clears throat> and this buttock will curve around to his leg. Come to there, which is going to feel, we don't see a whole lot of that, but we see a little bit of this coming through the gesture. You know, one thing, if you're having trouble with that, to, to, to feel that gesture, what's happening is it's on very much of a diagonal. Do you see that? So it's coming out. Here, here would be the foot right in through there. So we can take that and, and utilize what, we, what we're learning here. So right underneath here, that angle of alignment. Here's our diagonal to tell us where that's happening. So you, you reduce it down to one line, right? <clears throat> in terms of your gesture. Whoops, there goes my next broken. One more to one more to work on here, and you get that you get that idea to to work with through there, and it's, it pulls you right back in through here, and you have a little bit of a shape where that leg is right right in through there, <clears throat> back in through, and you just get a little bit of the silhouette of the toe, uh, the foot, the big the uh, condyle, the big toe, right in through there, and I, I keep breaking pencils like they were. Nobody's business when you get the idea. We can just simplify that in to where that foot's going to be and over. And we'll just put that in shadow. And you get this leg in shadow. And that's how we help to resolve, you know, that problem with that leg going back in space. And then lastly, we pretty much resolved in a general sense. This drawing has a long way to go in terms of the finish. But I think the ideas are there in terms of the horizontal and vertical uh, alignment uh, element to, to all of it, really, in terms of, of what we want to do. All right, so there you go. So pretty decent, um, and, and I think hard exercise. If you're not used to, if you haven't really thought about horizontal and vertical alignment before, you're probably using it in some respects, maybe not so great, but maybe uh, hopefully now you can use it in a much more I think hopefully much more dynamic uh, way than you have before. Um, and I think that this will get you on your, your way. You don't have to use rulers and things of that nature when you're drawing the figure, and you probably won't. But you're going to want to visualize these things, and I think that's going to give you a huge boost in your understanding of where things are, are placed and where you get nice little alignments as they line up and um, help you with your drawings in the in the future okay all right so um good lesson and i'll catch you guys uh next time with uh more stuff and more information and we'll move on all right you guys take care i'll see you next time bye bye